Hello, hello, I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we are going to go over some guided practice problems using work and energy. This is a very important skill to master for the MCAT chem -phys sections, so let's jump right on into it, into our first problem. A 10 kilogram box is pushed across the horizontal floor with a constant force of 30 newtons. If the box move a distance of 5 meters, what is the work done on the box? Pause this and see if you can solve it. So immediately, we want to think about what equation we should use. Since we're talking about work, we'll do work equals force times distance times our cosine theta. Since we know we have a horizontal force and the box is moving uh, some distance horizontally, we know that our theta between these, theta is going to equal 0, and the cosine of theta of 0 equals 1. So we can ignore the cosine in our equation. So it's just multiplying force times distance. So work in this case happens to just be 30 newtons times 5 meters, which is equal to 150 joules. And this here is going to be our answer. Let's move on to the next one. Take it up a notch. A two kilogram object is lifted vertically upwards at a constant velocity to a height of three meters. What is the work done against gravity in lifting the object? Pause and see if you can solve this one. So first, what equation do we want to use here? Well, we're lifting something vertically at a constant velocity. So this makes me think of gravity, or that's the force we're fighting against. We're fighting against gravity. So let's use our force equals mass times gravity. And we're going to assume we're on Earth. So if we just plug in here, we have a mass of 2 kilograms and an acceleration of 10. So we know the force that we're pulling with here is going to be 20 newtons. But now we need to figure out what is the work being done. Well, in the last equation, we said the work is force times distance times cosine theta. But once again, we're pulling all in the same direction. We've got some object that we're pulling straight upwards. So it's going to be moving all in the same direction. So our theta is 0. So again, cosine is just, we can ignore it. And great, we just calculated our force. So we can plug that in. So work equals 20. And our distance is given in the problem of 3 meters. So times 3. And then our work is going to be approximately 60 joules. Hopefully this one went well for you. But let's move on to the next. Let's say we have a five kilogram object sliding down a frictionless inclined plane that makes a 30 degree angle with the horizontal. If the object starts from rest and slides for four meters along the incline, what is its final kinetic energy? Take a few minutes, try and solve this one. The first thing I want to do, the others, I was writing equations right away, but I definitely want to visualize this at first. So I'm going to draw an inclined plane, throw in my theta there, and the best object I just always draw is a little box. So I have a box on my incline plane. It's sliding down. We know our theta is 30 degrees. So I'm going to put this down as our velocity vector, so v. And we know it's moving a distance of 4 meters. And we're solving for its kinetic energy. So we'll say that equals. We're not sure. And since we know we're looking for the kinetic energy, I think it makes sense to write out that equation to see if it gives us any ideas. So we know kinetic energy equals 1 half mv squared. So can we solve this? Well, let's see. We've got our mass, check, but no velocity. So we still need to figure out what our velocity is going to be. Now, a good way to calculate velocity, and I'm just going to move this over, is to remember what this is going to be equal to. We know that I'm going to draw the force here in blue. The force on this box moving down the incline is equal to mg sine of theta. OK, well, let's see what we have here. We have the mass, we have the gravity, we have theta. So this is an equation we want to use. Let's try and plug this in. So if we solve for our force, we get 5 times 10 times the sine of 30. So this is 50 times 0 0.5. So we have 25 newtons as our force. And now we need to take this force and convert it into work. So again, the work equation is work equals force times distance cosine theta. But again, the force and 
distance moving is all in the same plane. So our theta is equal to zero. So we can just plug in our force and the distance of four meters. So 25 times four, it's gonna equal 100 Newtons for our total work being done. And since there's no friction and the object is starting from rest, the work done by gravity is going to be equal to the final kinetic energy of the object. So it turns out we didn't even need to use velocity. Isn't that nice? Now finally, let's do one even tougher problem. A person uses a pulley system to lift a 50 kilogram object a vertical distance of 10 meters. The person then applies a downward force of 200 newtons to the rope and pulls the rope for 25 meters. What is the mechanical advantage of the pulley system? Take a few moments and see if you can solve this one yourself. Just like last time, I really recommend drawing out a picture first. Let's draw that picture. So I'm gonna draw a little pulley, put my ropes down. So we're lifting some 50 kilogram object. So this is gonna go up 10 meters. And they're pulling the rope at, must be at some angle because they're going for 25 meters with a downward force component of 200 Newtons. I think the easiest place to start here will be to calculate the output force required to lift the object. So our output force is just gonna be the mass times gravity of our object. So this we can just do as 50 times 10. So our total output force is gonna be 500 Newtons. And then even though I drew out all this fancy stuff, turns out it doesn't matter because the question told us our starting Newtons. So we can simply put our starting Newtons on bottom. So we're dividing 500 by 200. So our mechanical advantage then is approximately 2.5. These examples problems demonstrate various aspects of work and energy concepts. By practicing and understanding these problems, you will build a strong foundation for tackling even more complex problems related to work and energy that you could see on the MCAT. So thank you so much for joining me in this guided video, and I will see you next time.